Hi, it's Tracy from Two Rocks Tarot, and in this week's Tarot Tips and Tricks, I'm going to be talking about not connecting to a deck. So what I mean by not connecting to a deck is that um, for those occasions when you um, see on YouTube uh, a walkthrough of a deck and you absolutely fall in love with it, you see pictures on Instagram, on Facebook, you see other people reading with it and you think it's just gorgeous. So you save your money, uh, wait eagerly for it to arrive in the mail, then it gets there, you rip open the packaging, you, you rifle through, you look at all the images and you think, oh... You try and do a few readings with it and it's just gobbledygook. You don't, you just can't get what the deck is trying to tell you and you're really disappointed with it and you just put it away. <laughs> so what do you do when you don't connect to a deck that you've saved your hard-earned cash for? Well, I'm going to share with you a story of what happened to me with one particular deck. Now, the deck that I'm talking about is the Celtic Dragon Tarot, which was made by Llewellyn. This particular deck sat on my shelf for 15 years because what I just described to you at the beginning on the video happened to me when I got this particular deck. I um, absolutely adore dragons and when I got this deck I thought oh you know I couldn't wait I just could not wait to get it and then when I got it I thought oh my god I don't like it I thought that the the pictures of the dragons looked wishy-washy. There was no... I don't know. I just I just could not connect with this deck. And I tried. And um, so I put it away. And it sat on my shelf for 15 years. Then about two, three years ago, uh, there was a Instagram challenge of connecting with your spirit guides. And I used to have my... Uh, where I've got my crystals now on my shelf, I used to actually keep all my tarot decks there and the ones that I weren't using was in my desk that I'm actually sitting at. And just before um, I, I read about this challenge, I, I found this deck again and I thought, you know what, I might put it up on my shelf again and see how I go. So I decided to use this deck for um, said uh, challenge of connecting with your spirit guides and then... It was absolutely freaking fantastic. It just screamed at me. This deck gives me such good readings now, like I couldn't even describe to you. And and this cardstock is actually uh, superb, believe it or not. This Cluellen used to make beautiful, beautiful cardstock, and you know it, it's actually like brand new. This deck. I mean, obviously, because I haven't used it as much as I use my other decks, but it just reads so beautifully. So what happened? Well, I'll tell you what I think what happened is with this particular deck, and because I actually used this for a challenge of connecting with your spirit guides, when I first bought this deck, I wasn't ready to hear the message that the deck wanted to tell me. I wasn't in the right spiritual frame of mind for my spiritual guides to get through to me, to what they wanted to convey to me. I just wasn't ready for the message that this deck uh, wanted, gives, I should say, for the messages that this deck gives gives I just wasn't ready for it that's what I think happened with this particular deck that I just wasn't ready to hear what uh, the messages of the deck wanted to give me the voice was silent and actually as soon as I said that look what deck I what got I just got this is the ace of wands can you see the little baby dragons coming out of the eggs and there's one at the back that's actually uh, screaming up mouth open like it's roaring towards the rainbow and this just gives me confirmation because those of you who follow my channel know that I do spirit messages and one of the spirit messages that came through uh, concerned a rainbow and it was uh, it was actually an absolutely mind-blowing experience for myself and the lady who this message was for so rainbows hold a very strong significant message for me uh, spiritually and just to have this uh, as I was flicking through this card to come up roaring at the rainbow just confirms that this is exactly what this deck is for this deck is actually believe it or not to help me connect with my spiritual guides and 15 years ago i just wasn't ready to hear it i wasn't ready for the messages that this deck wanted to convey to me so sometimes when you don't connect with a deck it's because you're not ready to hear the messages that the deck wants to give to you so my suggestion would be is to put it away Pull it out, uh, like don't wait 15 years like I did because I truly forgot about it because I've got really long drawers in this desk that, you know, they're about that long and it was right at the back and I'd forgotten all about it. So, you know, don't leave it for 15 years. But I would suggest every few months or so is to take out the deck, 
have another play around with it and see how it goes and, and do it for a good year, you know, do it for a while at least, you know. And then if you truly feel like you're not going to resonate with the deck, well, then sell it or pass it on to someone who you know will, okay? But but I, I do, you know, I do suggest keeping it for a while, you know, a year if not more to see if the deck will connect, particularly if it was an expensive deck. This deck wasn't very expensive at all. But um, I, yeah, I don't like getting rid of decks. And, of course, back then when I got it, there was no, I don't think there was tarot swap and buy or anything like that that you could do. It was particularly hard. So, um hang on to it for a bit longer and try it every now and again and see how you go until you truly feel that no this deck isn't for you but I, I you know by all means don't just you know at least give it a year and longer to see how you go so that was one deck that um i didn't connect with at all and it absolutely screams to me now another deck that i didn't connect with at all was uh the wild unknown tarot these images on the deck just seemed like, uh, were just blur. They didn't speak. They, as you know, they're all black and white. And I absolutely love animals and I have no problem reading with animal themed decks whatsoever. I've got a few. I've got, um, I've recently just brought another one. Um, but the top of my mind, I'm trying to think, oh, Animal of the Tarot Lords, that's quite out there when it comes to uh, animal type uh, tarot decks. But I really connect well with that deck. And but the wild unknown, no, it just was not talking to me. I tried to sell this deck three times and I couldn't get rid of it, okay, because the postage here in Australia is very, very expensive. And this was before they actually made it, I think it's up to 500 grams, it's a certain amount of money. Um, but yeah, I tried to, and I thought, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to modify it, I'm going to cover it in. And that's exactly what I did. So I trimmed it. And I coloured it in. So my medium of choice was uh, was soft pastels and coloured pencils. And, uh, and then I sprayed it with a matte fixing spray that I just got from Bunnings, which is a local hardware store. So uh, it doesn't, you know, rub off. And it hasn't. I've had this. I've done this well over a year ago now. And none of the colours have faded. And it never chips or peels or anything like that. And now this deck absolutely screams at me too it's what it needed it, it wanted color now i like black and white decks I, I do i don't think i've got one i was looking at getting the Herm hermetic order uh tarot oh, i can't think of the. it's probably not the right uh, it's not the right title of the actual deck but i was looking at getting that and um you know so i do like black and white decks i think they're stunning but for some reason uh this did not speak to me being in black and white so that's what i did I, I i colored them in and now this deck is beautiful to work with it's really really speaks to me it's so so nice and i think what it is is because to me nature is full of color you know you don't go outside and see a black and white world do you you don't see um i mean of course there are animals in black and white but you know what i'm saying you don't see black and white trees and so forth and i think this is what it was for me i'm very nature centered nature based type of a person and so uh this this deck wasn't doing it for me at all since i've colored it in it's been amazing it's it's helped me connect to this deck in in ways that i didn't think was possible and I was actually going to just throw it out. And, and I thought, I'm just going to have fun with it. I'm just going to colour it in and see how I go. And once I started colouring in, I couldn't stop. I think I'd done this deck in about a, 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 like a week or two weeks or something. I just I just couldn't stop. It literally took me over. Um, you know, when you create something and you, or when you're reading a good book, like I often do, and you cannot stop and you'll be reading to 2 o'clock in the morning. This is what happened to me when I started modifying this deck. I could not stop colouring it in until it was done and and I absolutely love using it I really really enjoy using this deck now, deck now so that's another thing that you could do if you find that you are not connecting with a deck um, you might try modifying it and by modifying it you can you know by colouring it in and also we talk because uh, this is being trimmed as well so it's an actually it's a lot thinner than what the normal deck is in hindsight I probably would have should have kept the borders around it now and just coloured it in because some of them aren't exactly the same shape and also uh, I uh, modifying is edging so the deck was uh, is when you colour the edges with, with a colour with some black sharpie or you can use um, you can use some um, ink pads so i've got a couple of distressed ink pads you can you can use them as well to uh i'm still trying to figure out what i prefer if it's actual because ink can get kind of stamp pads can kind of get a little bit messy 
but um, some of them and some decks take better than others to uh, you know to to the stamp to the stamped ink and I also use highlighters just a good old highlighter um, I've got some beautiful pastel highlighters that I've used in my hush tarot so you just highlighters are my actually my favorite because I've got that um, they've got that particular you know that edge on it I can't, what's that called again that um, oh, I don't know angled edge or whatever <laughs> so you know but they're my favorite I'd rather use them than sharpies any day so uh, you know so that's what you can do you can trim so if the borders are too big so if it's got big fat borders on it you can just um, you know take all the borders off cut them off and then uh, just color it in a, a color that suits a deck whatever you think colors it I kept with black to keep with the theme on the back but as you can see the the colors of this deck uh, you know I, I've made them as, as bright well, I made them, I let the card tell me what it wanted, if that makes sense. I really, you know, like with the Ace of Cups, with the glow around the top on it, I, I just really let the card speak to me and tell me what it wanted, um, which is kind of hard. It's kind of hard to explain, but that's exactly how I did it. And, yeah, and so now this, this deck is just amazing. It's just, it's such a beautiful deck to work with. And it shuffles really well, so you can't... Um, you can't actually, it, it doesn't stick or anything like that. I'm just trying to find one particular. I love this little bat card too. Just loved it. <laughs> and I really had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. I enjoyed it so, so much. So I really highly recommend that if you have got a deck, you know, and, you know, it could even be a colour deck and maybe you don't like some of the colours, you might be able to go over it. I'm not really sure because I haven't tried that. But, um, you know, I... Try to find the hermit card because that was one of my favorites to, to color in this one here i love the hermit card <laughs> so it was really really fun and as you can see uh, i have to hold up my hands but you know it, it shuffles like really it, it there's no difference to it shuffling you know it just shuffles like a dream i'm, I'm a terrible shuffler that's why i always shuffle down like this but i just really wanted to show you you know it's and it still pops up so when cards like that pop up for me um some people call them jumper cards uh jumper cards too can be cards that fall down onto the floor as well and um, but that's when i know the card is for me so i'll take that card out and then i'll take this one out because it's it's calling to me and then i'll probably take this one out as well and that, that's exactly how i actually do my cards so the ones that i got were uh these ones here so that the cards that come out <laughs> so that, that's that's how I use jumper cards when I actually do a reading um, and that's what they're called I, I was going to do a video on shuffling but I thought how bloody boring because I'm not a really good good shuffler and um, so then I thought I would I would just add that into this connecting with your deck so there's a couple of ideas that you can do when you do not connect with your deck is to modify it and of course mine was quite extreme uh, when it comes to the wild unknown but I just thought hey you know I can't sell it I can't, you know, I, I, I'm going to just try because I really do enjoy colouring. That's another one of my hobbies. And I thought I'm just going to try it with this particular deck. And and even the pencils I use are like really cheap pencils. They're, I think, Marco Polo pencils or something, about 20 bucks on eBay. And, you know, so I didn't use anything expensive on, on, on doing this deck whatsoever. I, even with the Eight of Pentacles, I don't know if that will show up, um, but I've even put some gold glitter on that one. I just did it on the one because it's kind of because now you, you can feel it when it's in the deck you know oh shit, that's the eight of pentacles so i wouldn't probably put glitter on it anymore but um so that's just a couple of ideas and then if you find still that you don't like uh you, you know you just feel like you're never going to connect it and then you can make some artwork and i'll put a picture in and as you can see uh i've got two of these and i've put all the decks that i didn't connect with or just you know didn't like picked out the best pictures of uh, big best sorry best cards out of them all and made it into some artwork and i've got that framed either side of my of my crystal uh, uh collection so that's another thing that you can do as well so but when you truly don't connect to the deck I think the main reason is is because you uh, I you're not ready for the message that the deck wants to give you wants to need to it and you need to work uh, with your tarot oracle whatever skills for a bit longer and then when you are more receptive and open-minded 
uh, you, you'll be able to, you know, the deck will work with you. It, it truly, truly will. And I know that I, I wasn't ready all them years ago to hear messages from spirit. I, I really, really wasn't. So, so there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Until next video, take care. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you all in the next video.